Jalen Wagner. So you took a trip to the aquarium, saw the beautiful tank setups, the colorful fish, and all the live plants, and you thought to yourself, wow, I've got to have one of my own. But how? If you've owned fish before, then it's pretty safe to say that you are ready to go and get started. If you've never owned fish before and you want to know what all the hype is about, well, here's some wise words. Owning fish is not just having a pretty tank in your living room. This hobby explores lakes, rivers, and oceans and all of its inhabitants. Having this information ha handy is extremely helpful if you one day just randomly decide to start a tank or if your friends and family decide to start a tank because fish are animals and they deserve the very best. Setting up an aquarium can be quick and easy if you know what you're doing. Knowing how to set up an, uh, set up an aquarium is important so we ha do not harm the fish and like previously stated, more information lets us pre prevent abuse and neglect in our fish. I've been putting aquarium tanks together for three years now, and um, it's no trip in the park. Properly setting up an aquatic tank, it takes a while, but it's fun and it makes a safe space for your aquatic pets. Today, we are going to learn how to pick a tank Pick your substrate and decorations, assemble all the pieces, fill the water and make it safe, and of course, cycle, cycle your tank so it's ready to house some aquatic animals. First, let's discuss tanks. If you don't know your fish, do not get your tank. The size of the tank greatly depends on the tank. The size of the fish greatly depends on the tank that you're going to get. If you, for say, get want to get a beta fish, you can easily fall on the common mistake that beta only need two and a half gallons, but that's not true. Betas really do need about five to 10 gallons. So after you've picked your fish, now you can do quick research and find the minimum amount of tank size that your fish requires. Going along with the beta, you'll see that a beta really needs five gallons. It also needs a longer tank more than a taller tank because betas need to be able to come to the top of the tank and in a tall tank, they might end up suffocating if they can't get to the top. So picking your tank is extremely important. Now that we've discussed tanks, let's talk substrate and decorations. The substrate is just as important as the size of the tank. If you picked a low dwelling fish like a pleco, these fish are going to go on the bottom of your tank and rub their bellies against the substrate. So if you do pick a low-dwelling fish, you'll want something like sand or soil. If you didn't, then you can go along with gravel, like I have here. After you've picked your substrate, you'll want to make sure you clean it completely until the water runs clear, so that way none of the dust or particles from packing and chemicals get into your water. You'll also want to pick certain decorations that are not going to scratch or injure your fish and cause infections. Um, if you choose to use live plants, you'll want to also look at what the live plant is going to require in terms of substrate and how it's going to attach itself. After you have your substrate and decorations, we can now move on to assembling all of the parts. To easily assemble all the pieces, get everything together in a nice organized space. Like previously stated, you'll want to rinse your substrate. This is the first thing that you're going to add into your tank. After you've rinsed your substrate, you can add it to your tank. You'll want it to completely cover the bottom of the tank. Then you can add your decorations. If you have plastic decorations, you can add those now. If you have live plants or 
anything that is going to stand up in the water, you'll want to add those after you fill your tank with water. That way the plant does not get thrown around when you're adding the water and it helps to stand up straight. You can also now attach your filter and your heater. If you got a sponge filter, then you'll want to put that in after you've added your water as well. Now our tank has all the decorations and is ready for water. It's important that our water is dechlorinated to, um, so it is safe for our fish. To fill the tank, you can use tap water or some people like to use spring water. If you use spring water, you'll want to, you'll want to um, leave the spring water out for at least 24 to 48 hours so it is oxygenated. After you've added the tap water, then you'll then want to use a product that dechlorinates it. There are products like TapSafe or Primer, or I like to use this API stress coat um, to dechlorinate my water. You just want to make sure that on the bottle it specifically states that it removes chlorine. And then use the correct dosage that the bottle states. Finally, our water is in the tank and dechlorinated, and we can now start the nitrate cycle to ensure our fish have a good microbiome to thrive off of. To cycle a tank means to remove all ammonia from the tank and to naturally turn nitrites to nitrates. Nitrates reduce ammonia that comes from our fish poop. It's also necessary in plant growth. To start this, we can start two ways. We can do fish in or fishless. Fish in is more dangerous because of the toxic levels in the water and can result in fish death or you can do fishless, which is safer, but it takes a longer time. To start the cycle, you'll want to add a little bit of fish food, and then you'll want to immediately test your waters. You can test that by getting an API master test kit like this one, which has all the necessary supplies, or you can use testing strips. These are not typically ideal because it doesn't test for ammonia, However, I like to use these along with the API testing kit because it tests for chlorine and I wanna make sure all of that chlorine is out of my water. So once you test your levels, you can see, you'll specifically want to look at your ammonia levels. Once your ammonia levels have spiked, you'll know that your cycle has started. After doing that, you will want to add beneficial bacteria into your tank. I like to use the Fritzzyme 7, which artificially removes ammonia and nitrites as well. This um, will help your cycle move along and go a little bit faster. You'll know your cycle is complete when you've tested all your levels and you have zero ammonia and zero nitrites and about 30 to 40 ppm of nitrates. Now you can add your fish. In conclusion, your tank is now ready for your aquatic friends. We have successfully bought the proper tank picked our substrate and decorations, assembled it correctly, filled the tank and dechlorinated the water, and properly cycled the tank. So it's now ready for our fish. Setting up an aquarium can be quick and easy if you know what you're doing. It can be easy to just buy a fish and stick it in a fish bowl and call it good. But in doing this, we are endangering our fishy friends. Fish are just like any other animal and deserve the very best. By using this information, you can now safely set up a tank or help others set up a tank with the certainty that your fish will live a happy, healthy life.